This lesson will show you how to draw a line of text in the center of a window. The window can be resized and reshaped and the text will automatically shift positions to remain in the center. Just as in the previous example, this class extends the Canvas class to create a window into which we can draw the text. Now the constructor of text 2, just as text 1, sets the size of the window to be displayed. The only method declared in the class is the paint method that will be used to calculate the position of the string and display it in the window at that position. To be able to center text in a window, we have to know the size of the window. The information is available, but it comes in the form of a rectangle object. Now, this statement, rectangle rect, declares the location to store the address of a rectangle object. By the way, the location used to store the address of an object is called the reference. It's called that because once the address is stored there, it's the name of the reference that's used to refer to the object. In Java, you never address an object directly. You can only refer to an object through the name of the reference to that object. This statement is a call to the getBounds method of the Canvas class. Inside this method is a new statement that creates a rectangle object containing the height and width of the window. Whenever an object appears in Java, there is somewhere a new statement that created it. The only way to create an object in Java is to use the new statement. This is another reference. This statement is the declaration of a reference to a string object. The string object is very special in Java, and we'll be exploring it in some detail soon, but for right now, you just need to know that it's a special object and contains a string of characters. And you can create a string by simply inserting a quoted string of characters in the code. Now this statement creates a string object and stores its address in the string reference. You don't have to say new here because Java does it for you. More in the string object and its magic a little bit later. Each font has its own set of measurements. The font definition itself is stored inside the graphics object. And the graphics object has a method named getFontMetrics that returns the FontMetrics object that contains all the measurements of the font. Notice here that the reference to the FontMetrics object named FM and the call to the method that returns the FontMetrics object are on the same statement. The previous code creating the rectangle and string objects were split into two lines each, but they could just as easily have been written on one line like this. The resulting code is the same, it's just a matter of how you prefer to write it. But it's important that you remember that two things are being done. First, a reference is being declared, and second, an object is being created, and its address is being stored in the reference. The font metrics object contains all the information on the width of each character in the font, so the string width method can be called to look through a string of characters, add up all the widths, and determine the length of a string. We need this information so we can figure out where to position the beginning of the string in the window. The value of y is to contain the vertical position of the string. We want to center the text vertically so we can set the value of y to half the height of the window. The baseline will be displayed at this height. Now, I know the baseline is not exactly in the vertical center of the text, but it's close enough for this particular application. If you wish, you can get the ascent and descent value from the font metrics object. By doing a little algebra, figure out exactly where the center of the string should be and where the baseline should be placed to center the text. But the difference will only be a pixel or two in this example, and it's really not worth all that effort. The horizontal position of the string is slightly different. We need to do a little algebra here to figure out the position of the left end of the string. We start with half the window width, which is where we want the string to appear, and subtract half the string width, which is where we want the string to begin. And finally, we draw the string. The str argument contains the actual characters to be displayed, while the x and y values contain the position of the window. And that's all there is to it. 
this command compiles the programs. The programs are text2 and show text2. The main line of the program is show text2 and is exactly the same as show text1 from the previous example, except this one displays a text2 window instead of a text1 window. The program is run like this. And the window appears. The text is in the center. Expanding the window causes the text to remain in the center. Stretching the window horizontally and vertically will cause the text to reposition itself to remain in the center. Each time we release the mouse by resizing the window, the paint method is called and the calculations are performed to determine exactly where the text should appear so it appears in the center of the window no matter what its shape.